Hello. Okay, um, before I start today, uh, regarding the Form 4 Chapter 4 Heat, over here I would like to say thank you to Chegu Desikan, because this note is actually from Chegu Desikan from Perak School, and uh, I already asked his permission to actually use this uh, his notes for the video, so once again, thank you to Chegu Desikan. But throughout this video, I did have a little bit of modification to make sure that students actually understand even better. So, alright, then we shall start with the overview of Form 4, Chapter Heat. Okay, so there's four parts in this chapter. Understanding Thermal Equilibrium, Understanding Specific Heat Capacity, Understanding Specific Latent Heat, and Understanding the Gas Laws. So there is these four parts which we will cover this particular topic. So the first part, understanding thermal equilibrium, which uh, this particular video is talking about. After the lesson, you'll be able to explain what is thermal equilibrium and you'll be able to explain how a liquid in gas thermometer works. So thermal equilibrium, before we enter that, we shall need to understand a few terms in this topic. First one is temperature. So what is the definition of temperature? Temperature means the measure of the degree of hotness of the object. The SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. Unlike what most students always write, temperature of uh, unit of temperature is degrees Celsius. Please remember, degrees Celsius is just an unit. SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. Okay, so next is a hot object is at a higher temperature than a cold object. So hotter object, higher temperature, colder object, lower temperature. Okay, the next thing that we need to know is heat. Definition of heat over here is just a form of energy. That's why normally they call it a heat energy. So the SI unit of heat is actually in joules. When an object is heated, it will absorb all the heat energy and the temperature will increase. When it is cooled, it will release heat energy and the temperature will decrease. Net heat transfer is from the hotter object, higher temperature, to the colder object, lower temperature. And please note over here, it says net heat. We'll explain what is net heat in the next slide. Thermal equilibrium, oh sorry, thermal contact. Two objects are in thermal contact when heat energy can be transferred between them. So over here, two objects can transfer heat as long as they are in thermal contact. Alright, so next we're going to go into heat transfer. When two objects with different degree of hotness come into thermal contact with each other, heat energy is transferred between the two objects. Please note that over here, they only said that heat energy can be transferred when they are in thermal contact between two objects. They did not mention that heat only transfers from cold to hot or from hot to cold. Alright, mechanism of thermal equilibrium. If I have two objects, object A, which is a hotter object, and object B, which is a colder object, are in thermal contact with each other, right? Rate it is a faster rate of heat transfer from A to B. A because it's hotter, so that it will transfer more heat towards B. But B will also still transfer heat to A, but at a slower rate. So heat energy is transferred at a faster rate from the hotter object to the colder object. And heat energy is also transferred from the colder object to the hotter object, but at a slower rate. Therefore, because A transfers more heat compared to B, the net flow of heat from it is actually from the hot object to the cold object, right? Net flow of the heat energy is actually from the hotter object to the colder object. So hotter object cools down while the colder object will warm up. And after a certain period of time, heat transfer at the same rate between A and B, okay? So when they transfer at the same rate, which means A transfers 60 joules to B, B transfers 60 joules to A, so the heat transfer is the same, right? So we consider that as no net heat transfer between the two objects. So in the end, we can consider that the objects are to be in thermal equilibrium. 
So thermal equilibrium has two conditions. Condition number one, no net heat transfer between two objects. And condition number two is that at the final, condi at the final state, both objects have the same temperature. Okay, thermal equilibrium definition. When two objects are in thermal equilibrium, there is no net flow of heat between them. Two objects in thermal equilibrium have the same temperature, like what I said just now. Two conditions that must be met for thermal equilibrium is no net flow of heat and same temperature. Examples, how we use thermal equilibrium. First one is reducing fever using wet towel. A wet towel is placed on the forehead of a person who has high fever. So the person who is having high fever will have a higher temperature. The wet towel will have a cooler temperature. So initially, the temperature of the cloth is lower than the body temperature of the person. The heat energy is transferred from the forehead to the towel until the thermal equilibrium is reached. The towel is then rinsed in tap water and the procedure is repeated. That way, heat energy is removed from the person. Alright, Cooling drinks. A hot drink can be cooled by adding a few ice cubes to the drink. So heat from the hot drink is transferred to the colder drink until thermal equilibrium between the ice and the water is reached. Final temperature of the drink equals to the final temperature of the ice. Now, if you notice over here in this particular slide, I have highlighted or bolded the words. These are actually the keywords that you are supposed to write in exams. Okay, it's not saying that oh, the ice is actually causing the co uh, hot water to cool down, therefore, uh, the cold water, uh, hot water can be cooling instead no but you need to mention in physical terms heat from the hot drinks transfer to the colder drink until thermal equilibrium final temperature of the drink is equal to the final temperature of the ice you need to state all these keywords in your answers okay next we are done with thermal equilibrium we are now going into liquid in glass thermometer first Characteristic of the liquid used in a liquid in glass thermometer because it's glass and it's very very thin the thermometer so the liquid used must be easily seen it expands and contracts rapidly over a wide range of temperature and expands uniformly when heated it does not stick to the glass wall of the capillary tube next how does the liquid in glass thermometer work it obviously uses thermal equilibrium. So how do we explain? The bulb of the thermometer contains a fixed mass of mercury. The volume of the mercury increases when heat is when it absorbs heat. The mercury's volume expands and rises in the capillary tube. The length of the mercury column in the capillary tube indicates the magnitude of temperature. So over here, the liquid in glass that is used is mercury. So the physical quantity that actually changes when heat is transferred and uh, into the thermometer, it is actually the mercury's volume. So a lot of students will say that the length of the mercury column, but length of the mercury column is not what expands. It is actually the mercury's volume that expands. Okay, how do we, how do we calibrate a thermometer? All right, a temperature scale is obtained by choosing two temperatures called the fixed point. So normally the fixed point that we will use because we know the fixed point, the temperature is the ice point and the steam point. So fixed point at the lower point, which is the ice point, the definition is the temperature of pure melting ice, which the value will be zero degrees Celsius. The upper point is the steam point which is the temperature of steam from water that is boiling under standard atmospheric pressure with a value of 100 degrees Celsius. So now let's learn how do we calibrate a thermometer. Let's just here, we have a capillary tube with a bulb containing mercury inside. And there is no scale initially for this particular thermometer. So how are we going to create the scales? So number one, the lower fixed point 
which is ice point. So we put a we put ice and we put a thermometer submerged into this ice between the ice and we find out that the ice point right the thermometer will the mercury will rise until this particular point so from this dotted line here which is above the bulb until this ice point right this is the length l naught remember it's measured from above the bulb up to this position whereby the temperature of ice is measured then after that we put it into uh, put it at place where we actually have boiling water but it's not submerged in the boiling water in the other way it's actually at the steam level we only want to measure the temperature of the steam not the boiling water so when you actually put this the thermometers the mercury inside the thermometer will rise until a certain constant value and that is what we measured as L100. So that is our steam point. So again, it is measured from this lower line all the way up to L100. So that is the length of the steam point. So when two fixed points have been marked on the stem of the thermometer, the range between them is divided equally into 100 divisions because ice point is at 0 degrees Celsius, steam point it is at 100 degrees Celsius. So between them, we divide from here, L0, all the way to L100, we divide it by 100 equal division. So once we have divided and we marked it on the thermometer, we will have scales. So how do we actually measure other temperatures? So let's just say if I were to submerge this part or replace this thermometer at a certain uh, water or liquid with a different temperature it rises up until this level of l theta okay so using this formula the temperature theta is equal to the length of that particular temperature minus the length of the ice point divided by the length of 100 degrees Celsius minus the length of 0 degrees Celsius multiplied by 100 degrees Celsius. So using this particular formula, we would be able to find the temperature of this particular length. But please remember for this particular formula, when you write out in exam, please remember to write this degree Celsius at the back, right? or else it's going to be 100% or some other values. So if you put a degree Celsius here, the subject that we are measuring here will automatically become temperature. Okay, how does a thermometer work? Okay, when I submerge this particular thermometer into a liquid, right, when a thermometer is placed in contact with hot water, Heat is transferred from the hot water to the thermometer. So thermal equilibrium between the thermometer and hot water is reached when, no, when the net rate of heat transfer is zero, which means heat transferring from the hot water to the thermometer and from the thermometer back to the hot water is the same. So net rate of heat transfer is zero. The thermometer and the water are now at the same temperature. At this point, the thermometer reading shows the temperature of the water. So this is how a thermometer works. Okay. What are the characteristics of mercury that makes it suitable to be used as a liquid in glass thermometer? First, mercury is a good conductor of heat, which means it can detect the temperature change quickly. It has high boiling point up to 375, three, sorry, 357 degrees Celsius. So normally we only use in between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. So mercury will be a very good liquid in glass. Alright, mercury is also expands uniformly when heated. It is opaque, which means it does not allow light to pass through, therefore making it to be easily seen. Mercury freezes at a temperature of negative 39 degrees Celsius and it is therefore not suitable for measuring temperature below this temperature such as at the North Pole. Right, how do we increase the sensitivity of the mercury thermometer? First, 
make the capillary tube thinner, therefore making it more sensitive. The glass bulb with a thinner wall so that heat can transfer easily into the thermometer and using a smaller bulb so that lesser mass it can heat up even faster. Alright, with that actually I have finished uh, 4.1 Understanding Thermal Equilibrium but I'm going to explain a question right now over here. There's one question here. An alcohol in glass thermometer cannot be has not been calibrated, means it's a clean thermometer with no scales on top. When it is inserted into melting ice, which means 0 degrees Celsius, and boiling water 100 degrees Celsius, the length are 5.2 cm and 13.7 cm respectively, which means at 0 degrees Celsius, the length is 52, sorry, 5.2 cm. At 100 degrees Celsius, it's 13.7 cm. When it is inserted into a cup of warm water, the alcohol length is 9.8 cm. Calculate the temperature of the warm water. So the keywords over here is melting ice and boiling water's length is 5.2 cm and 13.7 cm. Next, when it's inserted into a cup of warm water, the alcohol length is 9.8 cm. So information that we get is length when ice melt 0 degrees Celsius is 5.2 cm, that's L0. Length when water is boiling at 100 degrees Celsius is length 100 equals to 13.7 cm. The length in warm water, L theta, is 9.8 cm. So how do we solve this? Using this formula. Theta equals to L theta minus L0 over L100 minus L0 times by 100 degrees Celsius. So L theta is 9.8 minus by L0 5.2 divided by L100 13.7 minus L0 5.2 times 100 degrees Celsius. Calculating this into your calculator, you'll get 54.12 degrees Celsius. So this is how you are supposed to obtain the answer of temperature in the warm water. Please remember in exam, remember to use this method. Hi identify the information, write out whatever information that is given, remember to write the formula or else the examiner will have no idea what you are, which formula are you using. Substitute the answers in and then finally, using your calculator, calculate out the answers. Okay, so next, that's the end of uh, subtopic 4.1. Thank you very much.